Oh man, it's Halloween and I don't have anything to review. Oh jeez. If only there was some way something would just appear before me that I can review and do a video about. Like maybe through a jump scare or something. Oh! Oh, the jump scare. <laughs> the jump scare has delivered me something to do a video about. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Monster in My Pocket. They were little rubbery, plasticky type of things that don't really show up well on camera. Um, this one's kind of bright. Um, they were put out by Matchbox in, I think, uh, 1990. Uh, they're very similar to, like, the, um, the muscle figures, little fleshy-looking, you know, weird monster guys they had. You know, they, they were everywhere in the 80s, and there was, uh, you know, other similar types of toy lines um, like that. This was Monster in My Pocket. It was basically a series of monster characters. They came in a bunch of different colors. You see here I have red, yellow, green, and purple. These ones were the standard, although I also have a couple in different colors. I don't know where these guys came from. I've only ever seen these ones. Uh, I believe um, these might be like rarer ones or something like that, or... Um, well, I, I know that some of the, you know, they, they actually repeat. There's some, you know, that you're going to see twice in this video. Well, I, I won't show them twice, but um, there's one, they, they come in multiple colors and there's a lot of repeats like that. Although I've heard that some of the monsters are rarer in certain colors, but I'm not really sure. I'm not a huge expert on this. I know there are a lot of collectors of little tiny things like this, but um, I've never seen ones in these colors before. I'm guessing these are either rare part of some kind of later release or i know they were also available um in like cereal boxes and various other places so these might be exclusive to something but i'm not really sure i've only got the two so we won't really spend too much time on those but yeah they uh they basically had just a line of monster characters and they released them in like little four packs and i think there were some other different different um you know packaging they had they, they might have had bigger ones I, I remember distinctly they had uh the four packs which had four randomly inserted ones but yeah these were really cool i remember uh collecting these when i was a kid don't have any of my original ones i've been sort of hoarding the <laughs> hoarding them off of ebay uh for some time now and i've kind of grown the collection to quite an impressive amount amount of monsters here this is not the entire set unfortunately there are a couple that are missing but you know what that's fine i, I and I, I really do like these um i kind of you know like rediscovering these because they are pretty cool so um we will be going through uh most of these if we run into doubles we'll just kind of skip over it but yeah this is series one and they each have a number on the back, and I believe there was like a checklist, and you can check off, you know, the ones you have as usual. So this one right here um, is the Phantom, as you can see by the mask there, the Phantom of the Opera. So there's like the classic, you know, universal monsters, but there's also, there's some like generic ones in there, there's like zombies and skeletons and ghosts, as you can see there, but they also sort of went into like, folklore and mythology and you know all, all they, they they took stuff from all different sources and i thought that was pretty cool these were a lot of fun to collect especially if you love monsters and weird stuff so yeah this is the phantom of the opera um arguably not a bit not much of a monster he's just kind of a defigured crazy guy if you really think about it but i suppose he does fit in pretty nicely so there was that one uh, this one right here, this is actually one of my favorites, and I think one of the more uh, iconic ones associated with the series. This is just a generic ghost, and as you can see, I have uh, a yellow one and a purple one down there. Um, I like this one uh, mostly because of its simplicity. Also, it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> it's uh, just a disembodied head above uh, a sheet, and <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess in real life it might be a little creepy, but, um, you know in uh it, you know in theoretical form it's kind of you know like a figure it's just kind of silly uh i do remember also there was an nes game for um monster in my pocket it was a very good nes game unfortunately i think it's uh one of the more rare titles for the nes not one of the hugest rare titles but um 
I think it came out during uh, much later in the lifetime of the NES. So finding it is going to be kind of difficult. And oh, I just noticed somebody put a little Sharpie mark on the bottom. That's not cool. But yeah, the Monster in My Pocket game was really good. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's any other way to play it. Uh, I don't know if it was released in a collection or anything. Uh, but if, if you do get a chance to play it, it is really good. It's kind of hard, but it's a, it's a very good underrated game for the NES. Also, Monster in My Pocket had an animated TV show that not a lot of people know about. I've actually never seen it. I've seen little clips of it online, and it doesn't look very good, but um, I think that is something worthy of uh, noting. So then we have this guy. Now, when I first saw this, I thought this was Quetzalcoatl, you know, like the... Um, was it the Az Aztec gar god, you know, the snake god with the, you know, because I, I saw that he had the snake body and he's got like a little headdress here. Um, no, it turns out this is a cockatrice, which is like a half chicken, half dragon thing from some mythology. I don't, I genuinely don't know what, what where it originated, but um, yeah, I didn't really, uh, I never, I didn't really see that when I saw this figure. It's, uh, it just kind of looks like a, a humanoid with a snake tail. Um, that is another thing about this. Some of the monsters in this, not only are, are the designs a little strange, it's really good. I like, I like the design of this. It just didn't really say cockatrice to me. The um, monsters designs have been altered quite a bit in some cases. And in other cases, some of the choices in this line are a bit questionable. We'll get to at least one or two of those uh, at some point. But yeah, this is the cockatrice. Not a bad figure. Uh, I would like to say these also have aged very well. You'd think they would fall apart or the plastic would get a little sticky, but um, no, they've uh, they've held up very well. So this one, um, I'm trying to remember the names. There is actually an online guide that will you know, they cataloged every single one of these and, and it lists their names. Uh, I did look over it not too long ago, but I don't remember every single one. I believe this guy is called a red cap. Um, if I'm wrong about any of these, or I just genuinely don't remember what they're supposed to be, I will put uh, you know a little thing underneath correcting me. So just just so uh, just so it's on record. I don't really know much about what a red cap is. I think it's like a troll or something, some kind of troll or goblin or some, I don't know. It, a lot of these um, do fall into a much more obscure category. Uh, not this one, though, because this is a werewolf. Like I said, they do have the classic universal monsters. Um, this one's really nice. I like the pose. They have really good poses, a lot of these. Really cool. And surprising amount of detail on them for what they are. You can see all the little hair marks in there. Whoops. He, he jumped away. He went to go go hunt uh, somebody. I don't know. Um, yeah, like that one. Uh, here's another really good one. It's the Invisible Man. And I really like that they have this bandage that just kind of flaps around. I do have this one in a couple more colors. You can see them right there. So we'll skip over those. I just I noticed uh, he has his cane there, as if um, how's he holding that? It doesn't look like his his hand is. <laughs> that's a little strange. Uh, yeah, I really like this one too. And uh, of course, you got your standard witch, little uh, you know broomstick, long hair, big nose, cackling in the night, going to kidnap children or whatever witches do. Um, really cool. Like that one. And, of course, we have the vampire, Count Dracul, or uh, looks more like Count Orlok from uh, Nosferatu, based on the face. Um, yeah, again, lo love the poses. This one has a little bit of damage on him, uh, a little bit of dirt on him, too. I did my best to try and clean these as best I could. Unfortunately, um, when you're dealing with soft rubber like this, it's uh, kind of difficult to get him get him good and clean i did uh, i owe whenever i buy used toys i always at least give them a good coat of alcohol just to disinfect them in case you know you never know where they came from <laughs> but um yeah i did i think i did a pretty good job we'll uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit and we go next here is a skeleton and i really like this one they could have just you know given us a skeleton and a pose but this one has a really nice 
pose right there. He's missing a leg. He's holding on to the head of another skeleton. Yeah, yep, it's definitely a skeleton. He's got no skin on him. And I really like this one. I remember this enemy from the NES game particularly because he used to just kind of hobble along and try and attack you. So there's the skeleton. I really like that one too because um, it, it, I think that one, is, uh, that one is pretty iconic with the series. So then there's this one. It's this guy who is... He looks like a, a super villain. He's got a, like a mask on. I believe... This is supposed to be spring Heel Jack, and I don't really know much about spring Heel Jack. I kept getting him confused with, like, Jack the Ripper, but apparently it's some kind of demon or some kind of superhuman that would, like, jump around on rooftops or... Some, I, I think that's what this is. I'm not really entirely sure, but I do like the pose he's in. He looks like he's about to leap off, or perhaps he's creeping around somewhere trying to cause trouble. Very nice. Very cool, and that's um that's what I meant when I said they they kind of went around to all different cultures and all different mythologies and beliefs and everything to try and you know fill the series. And uh, keep in mind too, this is series one. They actually had four, or actually there was more than four, but there was I think four of the actual Monster in My Pocket series. So this one here is I believe this is a zombie. Yeah, some some of them are just generic. You know, you got ghost, skeleton, zombie. Uh, you gotta, you kind of got to include them in the, uh, <laughs> I just realized every single one of them has the number 10 or at least the ones I've seen. Hmm. That's strange. I thought, I thought that was like a way to identify them or something. I'm not really sure, but whatever. It's a zombie. It's pretty easy to identify. We've all seen zombies in one form or another. And finally for the red guys, we have the Frankenstein monster. There he is with his big jaw and his head bolts and his chains. And he looks kind of hairy, actually. <laughs> I don't recall Frankenstein's monster having this kind of back hair. This one's 15. Hmm. I, I guess I don't really know what those numbers are supposed to represent. But whatever, really cool. He got big shoes. Look at that. Stomping around. Going, Arr! fire bad. Arr! <laughs> uh, I really do like these. So that's it for the top ones. And I'm glad I don't have to touch them anymore because I don't know if you guys know this, but this goes down behind the, the desk. And if anything falls down there, it is gone forever. I think I did actually drop a mad ball down there. One of the little mad balls. And it's a miracle I was able to find it. But uh, these guys, they'll probably be gone forever if I lose them. So we won't be touching the top row anymore. Instead... We'll start with the yellow guys. This is, I th yeah, number 10, again. Um, I This is a, a, either like generic mad scientist or perhaps Dr. Jekyll. I don't really know. I would assume it's Dr. Jekyll because he's kind of in that pose where he's like, uh, he, he's, he's already taken a drink of the potion and he's in mid-transformation trying to resist the evil of Mr. Hyde. But... Whatever. Either way, it's a really good one. I like him. And then we move on to Medusa, who is a not a snake-bodied Medusa. Yeah, number 10. Hmm. Again, I, all right. I'm, I'm not really sure what that means anymore, so let's just, let's just move on. Yeah, Medusa from Greek mythology. You got her snake hair. Usually Medusa is portrayed with a snake tail, but I guess they went for, um, you know, more humanoid version. She's got a, she's got a booty on her. <laughs> wow. I never noticed that before. Just don't look in, look, you can stare at her booty, but don't stare into her eyes. That would be bad. Okay. So now we move on to this guy right here. This was one of the ones I originally had trouble identifying. Uh, and I did have to look this one up on that website. I, I think I'll put like a link to the website. If you guys want to see, you know, you know, the ones that I don't have, cause there are a couple that I don't have and you know, uh, more, uh, you know, they go more into more detail about the other releases. But anyway, um, I saw this, and I wasn't sure what he was supposed to be. He was either... Uh, I, I thought he was either a witch doctor, based on, like, the headdress and the grass skirt. Or, uh, it looks like he has a shovel, so I thought maybe he was a grave digger or something. No, it turns out, this guy is... Chiron? Or Chiron? Or... I forget how, how to pronounce the name. 
He's the ferryman that takes people to Hades. Yeah, uh, he doesn't look anything like uh, the traditional look of the character. I believe he's typically portrayed as being this mysterious figure in a cloak that you never see his face or anything, anything like that. And he just, you, you give him a coin and there, yeah, there's the coin right there. I didn't even notice that. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of an odd design. I've never seen him portrayed like, as like just a guy. <laughs> it's, he's always like, he's always had this like grim reaper look, but this is kind of odd. I don't know. Maybe in some culture he's portrayed like this. He's got, Again, he, he just looks like a witch doctor or like a caveman or something. I don't know. All right, well, there he goes. Point, points for creativity, at least. Then we have female vampire, because we can't have uh, just a male vampire, right? Uh, again, <laughs> I think maybe they uh, reused a little bit of the mold for uh, Medusa there, or perhaps vice versa, but uh, she has the same booty. <laughs> um really cool love the love the face right there mean got her fangs out ready to ready to bite somebody love it and next to her we have the mummy i assume this is supposed to be Himotep from the original mummy not the brendan fraser mummy although i actually do kind of like the brendan fraser mummy i don't i don't care what anybody says but um this is a very traditional mummy i believe uh you know Himotep was like just a guy also who is kind of rotting a little bit, but, uh, you know, traditional mummy wrapped in bandages, mouth open, uh, you know, fumble, uh, not fumbling, just limping around and trying to do whatever mummies do, uh, get revenge or protect their gold or whatever. So then we move on to this one. I genuinely can't remember who this is supposed to be. This one is 15. Uh, it um, looks like some kind of tiki god. It's, it's some kind of deity or some... It, it's obviously got, you know, maybe some South American influence. Again, I will put up the name of what it's supposed to be. So uh, j just for clarification purposes, in case I, you know, say something wrong. Uh, this one's kind of strange because it doesn't even look like a, a monster. It just looks like a statue. Maybe it's a statue that comes to life and kills people. I, I don't know. But, um... Very good design. Again, got some decent detail in there. You can see all the little markings. See the all the individual teeth on those faces. I really like these. I I, I would really hate to you know I would really hate to ha these have been forgotten about, but um it does seem like they are very still widely collected. Uh, again, we got the ghost. We got the um, invisible man there. Next up, we have. A Cyclops, straight out of Odysseus. Really nice, very big, mean. Four fingers and a fist rate a pound. There you go. Cyclops, very, very good choice for the Monster series. Now, here's one that I think is very questionable. So, we see we have some kind of animal-like creature here. And he's number five. Jeez. All right, I'm, I'm just going to let the number thing go. I really don't know what um, what that was all about. I, th I thought it was for identification purposes, but apparently not. So, can you wager a guess as to who this is supposed to be? This is the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, um, kind of an odd choice for this series because usually they're, you know, they're monsters, they're evil, they're, they do horrible things. The Beast is, you know, part of a redemption story. I think, uh, I don't know. I don't, I feel like they're stretching a bit with this one. I do like the pose he's in. He's pointing accusingly at somebody. You haven't been subscribed to this channel, have you? <laughs> um, yeah, there, there were a few odd choices to put into the series. I do know that there was one figure, and I, uh, I don't have that one, but one figure in this line was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Just... Just a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I mean, I know they're scary. And the uh, odd thing is that these came out before Jurassic Park. Before, like, dinosaurs being scary was kind of a mainstream thing. But um, I, I thought that was kind of weird. And what's even weirder is that a later line of... Uh, I don't know if they were called Monster in My Pocket. Or they might have just been, like, a subset of this. There was actually a line of dinosaurs. So that was kind of an odd thing. I, I feel like they could have used that slot with the T-Rex for something else but um yeah, again 
really nice looking, really cool, even though he's a bit odd to fit in there. So, um, actually, let me, let's me let look at this guy first, and then we'll look at these two together. Um, hmm. I don't remember who this one's supposed to be. Uh, perhaps an orc? Or some kind of troll? Or an ogre? I'm not really sure. Again, I will put it up when uh, when the timer's right. Um, again, really cool. Really like this one. Now let's move on to these two, because we need to look at them... Uh, side by side. So these ones caused a little bit of confusion for me. So one of these is a manta. This is a manticore, and then this is a chimera. I could have sworn that this was a manticore. I, I could have sworn I've heard, I've seen, because it's a it's a lion with like two heads and a snake tail, and I could have sworn I've heard this particular creature be called a manticore before, but I don't remember where. But then we have uh, manticore, which is like half man, half uh scorpion i think i'm not really sure i like i like his face he's got big old teeth look at that <laughs> but yeah that that was a bit confusing because i could have sworn this was a manticore but i, I guess not uh, i might have just been mistaken but um again really nice uh inclusion into the series i think they fit very well unlike you know certain other ones <laughs> so then we move on to the green ones so this one, I wasn't entirely sure what it was supposed to be. Um, it looked like uh, something coming out of a tub. And I guess these were bubbles or something. This is Baba Yaga. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about Baba Yaga. I think um, there's like Baba Yaga is mentioned in like a bunch of different cultures. Um, it's basically she's a witch or just some crazy old woman who lives in the woods or something like that. I'm assuming they're, they're going for like the witch thing here since, uh, she's in a, a cauldron or coming out of a cauldron or something. I don't really know, but I do like this one. I think this is definitely one of my favorites just because of the, it's got good texture. It's got a really good, um, head sculpt on there. And it's a very, very unique, um, very unique design for it. So I think this one sticks out very well. So then we move on to this one, who is, uh, it looks like he's got gills. I'm guessing, is this the fish, uh, fish man? Is this the, like the creature from the Black Lagoon or something? I'm not really sure. He's got, um, he looks very fish-like. But his body is very, very human-like, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I do like when they have, like, really wide open mouths. I don't know why. I think it's just because you get to see a little bit more detail. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming this is the, the fish man from the creature from the Black Lagoon. Does that thing actually have a name, now that I think about it? I, I believe... Uh, I've only ever heard it be called the creature, so I, I really don't know. Anyway, we got uh, another Medusa... Another Dracula. Uh, this one right here, which I also have the, the orange version of. Um, I think this is the Hobgoblin. I'm not entirely sure. There's a lot of creatures that kind of look, you know, like they could be either a goblin or a gremlin or some something similar to that. I'm pretty sure this is a Hobgoblin. I actually don't really know what a Hobgoblin is <laughs> as compared to a goblin. Um, guessing it's like a more ferocious version of a goblin. I genuinely don't know. And he also has a bit of a booty too. <laughs> uh, I like this one cause it, it, again, it has some really nice textures. It looks very scaly. He's either scaly or wrinkly. I'm not really sure. So we got that one and we have this here, which I think is, uh, some kind of hunchback, maybe Quasimodo or, uh, Igor from Frankenstein. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm guessing it's Quasimodo just based on how it looks, which again is kind of an odd choice as a monster because Quasimodo is kind of sympathetic, you know, it's, uh, it's, but then again, the, the monster from Frankenstein is also kind of sympathetic. It's kind of a gray area really, but again, he does fit in fairly well. He's, he, he's usually included in the, uh, you know, canon of the like universal monsters. So then we have another beast pointing accusingly at my finger. <laughs> uh, we have another invisible man. Then we have this one here, which I think is a gremlin. I'm not entirely, again, I'm not sure. 
I will put it. Do they have their names on here? Um, nope. Made in China. NBR thirty. Oh, oh, maybe the maybe the identifying things are on the bottom. Well, let's have a look. 40, 46. Yes, they have numbers on the bottom. Maybe that's how you identify them. Uh, I really like this one too. I like the uh, little spooky pose. He's like, I'm gonna get ya. And if I'm a gremlin, I'm gonna take all your machines apart and and cause havoc and and torture Gizmo. Uh, we got another witch. We have this one here. Now, going back to strange designs, um, this one right here, can you take a guess of who this is supposed to be? I mean, we got a, we got some kind of flap on the back. We got a snake tail. We have a, a jaw, a, a mouth with no jaw. This is supposed to be a harpy. I don't think I've ever seen a harpy portrayed with a snake body before. Harpies are usually just like, uh, you know, bird-like, or, you know, they're females, they have, they have, like, a human female form, or something like that, I have never seen this before, so they, they either, you know, went to some obscure design for it, or they took a lot of creative liberties, either way, you know, it doesn't matter, because it does look really cool, I like, I also like when they're very thick and chunky, like that, I think that's another reason why I like the Baba Yaga one, this one looks, um, very nice, too, uh, whether or not it's accurate but is, I guess, kind of irrelevant. Uh, then we have another mad scientist slash Dr. Jekyll. We also have two yellow ones down here. Let's take a look at these real quick. This is the Kraken from uh, Greek mythology as well as various other mythologies. I believe I believe there's all different versions of the Kraken. Uh, the one I'm most familiar with, and the first one I ever saw was from Clash of the Titans, the movie, the original one from 1981, which was uh, which was a really cool design, by the way. It's just a giant fish man with four arms. I'm surprised that that design has never been used for anything else. But typically the Kraken, I believe, is portrayed as just being a giant squid monster or something like that. This one uh, has a little bit more personality. I do like, I did notice the uh, little squid beak he seems to have right there. Very nice. We've seen the Kraken in a lot of other different things, like um, Pirates of the Caribbean had it, and I think there's there's probably some other movies. Uh, I do like this one. I, I do miss the Ray Harryhausen design from Clash of the Titans, but uh, I guess this is a more standard look for the Kraken. And over here we have this giant bird. This is a rock. Uh, I believe rocks are from either Egyptian or Greek mythology. Uh, they're basically just giant birds. Just giant mean birds that come around and pick people up. This one is actually kind of... <laughs> I just noticed he has a very tiny body. This is very... Whoa! He's, he tried to fly away. Very strange to me. Um... Yeah, this one's a little uh, little off, I think, um, mostly because of how small it looks. But uh, it's all right, I guess. It fits in. Again, uh, points for including something a little less, I guess, mainstream. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, a little a little more, um, you know, obscure than your typical stuff. So uh, we have another Medusa right here. Here is another one of my favorite ones. This is a griffin, and the reason why I really like this one is because it doesn't even look very scary. It just looks very majestic, doesn't it? You can just kind of picture it perched on a cliff somewhere with this, uh, like, like getting ready to take off, and you know, it's just a, it's just a big, beautiful animal from mythology instead of just being evil and killing things. Um, are griffins evil? Because I, I've Notice that there's a lot of fiction that uses them, you know, normally. Like in World of Warcraft, you you could buy a griffin as a as a mount, and you can take griffins in between cities. I don't know, um, but again, I really like this one. Got a nice. Uh, it's just it's just a a majestic griffin doing its thing, not scaring anybody. Uh, we have another zombie right there. We have this one right here, which has uh, some kind of Egyptian headdress. Um, 
not sure who maybe uh maybe it's anubis or uh, uh maybe it's a sphinx i think this is a sphinx i'm not really sure i do like it though uh, he has i like how he has a couple of skulls in his hands that's a nice little touch so yeah this might be a sphinx a more humanoid version of the sphinx if not again if not i will put up uh, a correction text so we have uh, another chiron or chiron there um I want to say a gargoyle, maybe. Uh, possibly a gargoyle. It's got little tiny wings for a gargoyle. <laughs> and again, he's got some nice little textures on him. Some scales right there. That, that's what uh, maybe leads me to believe he's a gargoyle. Really, really good looking face right there. I like that a lot. So then we have another invisible man. We have another ghost. Um, we have this. Okay, I was not at all sure what the hell this was supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, look at it. Um, it kind of looks like one of those bats that has, like, the weird noses. You ever see one of those? Uh, no, it turns out... I forget the name of this one. It's a Hanover or something like that? A, ha a Hanover? I'm not really sure. I, I, I briefly looked into it. I think it's from, like, German mythology or German folklore or something like that. I don't know. I don't, I'm not even sure what I'm looking at here, to be honest. It's just a, it's just like a giant face with either hair or wings with a big warty upturned nose and like a cape or something. I have no idea. It's a very odd design, but again, I really like it because he has an open mouth. He's got a big, he's, he's big and bulky. I really do like it again. A very, uh, whatever it is, it's obviously very obscure. So uh, points to that. Then we have, I think, I think this is a goblin. I'm not sure. He's got a big pot belly. He's got a mean face and he's carrying around a hatchet with his number 10 on it. <laughs> really cool. I like the pose. He's kind of leaning over. It's like he's dragging the hatchet along, ready to swing it at somebody. Really cool. And then we have another possibly goblin or whatever that was. So then we have these last two here. Uh, this is a troll. It's a, it's a very specific troll, and I can't remember the name of it. I believe it's from Norse mythology. Got a lot of heads on them. A lot of heads and a big old club. Now, interesting story with this one. Uh, on that website that I was looking up all the names of these characters on, they mentioned that there was a secret giveaway on uh, one of the packages, and it had a, a monster in a, in a silhouette. And it was like, you, you mail away or you can enter to win, you know, a very special monster. This was that monster. Uh, the, well, at least that's what it was in the silhouette. Now, uh, there was a lot of um, discrepancy around that. Because apparently, nobody really knew what the giveaway was. But apparently, uh, one person on that website said that the secret monster was this. But instead of, you know, how these each have a number on their back like that, instead of having the number, it had a star on its back. So people have been apparently looking for the secret monster, which was this guy with a star on its back. Well, guess what? I don't have it. <laughs> Uh, from what I understand, uh, that particular monster has still yet to turn up. Um, I don't know. I, I, I checked on eBay to see if they had any. I like looked up rare ones, and that's how I, I came to the conclusion that these like strangely colored ones might be rare. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like um, the secret monster has made any appearance. So uh, anybody out there who has a big old bag of monster in my pockets... Check and see if you got the rare one. <laughs> it might be worth a small fortune. But anyway, uh, even though this guy isn't rare, again, this is one of my favorites because look how much detail is put into this. Got so many heads on there. Got all that hair. And it's just, it's just generally a really good one to look at. So I like that one. And then we come to the final one here. This guy, who I thought was a Hydra. But no, this is actually... This is supposed to be number one. This is like the first monster on the list, apparently. So, yeah, actually, let me, um, yeah, yeah, number one. Okay, so I guess this is how you identify them, the little number on their foot instead of whatever that number is supposed to represent. But, yeah, uh, this, uh, not a Hydra. This guy is just called um, the Great Beast. 
I believe that's what he's, it's called. And um, I don't really know what that's supposed to mean. I think maybe this is supposed to be Satan <laughs> or something like that. Um, but it, again, it's really cool. A lot of detail. Really good. Got, got multiple heads just like the troll there. Got all different kinds of expressions on it. A lot of detail into it. I do like when they put some decent detail into small figures like this. So yeah, that is the Great Beast or the Mighty Beast or whatever the hell its name was. The the number one monster in my pocket. So that was series one of Monster in My Pocket. There were other series too. There was um uh, after that they had series two, obviously with the uh, you know a bunch of different monsters. Uh, then there was a series three, and uh, I believe they also came in you know different, more vibrant colors, which was the uh, which was the um, trend of the '90s at the time. You know, bright, vibrant color things were uh, very popular back then. So they came in you know much more variety of color. Uh, there was a bunch of other series too. There was a series. I already mentioned the dinosaurs. They had a series of wrestlers as well. And I believe in 2006, Monster in My Pocket had a revival, which was basically a bunch of these ones with uh, a lot more detail on them. And I, I would actually love to get a hold of those and maybe do a video on them for next Halloween or something like that. But uh, I haven't really seen too many of them online. I believe they came with a card, and it was supposed to be for like a card game. And I, I had never even heard about that. I don't know much about the Monster in My Pocket card game. Um, there were other cards, like trading cards and stuff for Monster in My Pocket. But per me personally, I remember the collectible little rubber plastic figures. And I still really like them to this day. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I have any more to look at. So I guess we're just going to have to end the video here. Oh, oh, the jump scare. It brought us more things to look at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Monster in My Pocket Series 4. I just happen to have a bunch of these here. Also known as the Super Scary Series. Ooh. So, um, I didn't know much about these. I had never had these before, but I did manage to get a bunch of them when I was collecting the regular Monster in My Pockets. And I figure it would be a good time to take a look at these. Now, I don't really know the names of some of these because some of them had like weird names. And again, I'll put up their names in, uh, you know, a little, an uh, not an annotation, but a little message at the bottom of the video. But um, these ones are really cool. For one, they're much, much bigger. Here's one for scale. I mean, look at that. Um, there's, uh, you know, a lot more detail, a little bit more paint on them. They're, you know, usually in three colors. Uh, some of them, again, I don't know the names of, I believe some of these are actually supposed to be like original characters or something, but I do know the names of a couple of these and we'll go through that as soon as, uh, we get to them. Now, uh, one thing to note about these ones is they are very sticky. They, they're like real, well, they're not really sticky right now. Cause I did wash these a lot and it took me a long time to get these, you know, clean enough to handle but um compared to the older ones which are much older uh they're not as sticky in fact i would dare say that these have held up fairly well they don't feel any that much different from when i originally had them from what i from remember of them but um these ones uh yeah they're very sticky i don't know if you can see but yeah, it's, uh, my, my skin is kind of sticking to it. And I, I scrubbed these. I used Windex. I used alcohol. I got Q-tips. I was scrubbing them, scrubbing them, scrubbing them. Just, just so they'd be, you know, at least good enough for me to handle for this video. Um, but yeah, that is one thing I, I kind of didn't like about these. But anyway, um, these ones are still really good, at least on display. And like I said, I don't remember what their names are. Uh, I will put the names at the bottom. Uh, I like this one. It looks like a looks like a super villain. Looks like a like a silver age, uh, you know, bronze age super villain from a comic or something. But um, yeah, really, really do like this version. Uh, they don't have as much charm as the original ones did, but uh, I do like the extra effort they went into to design these. Like this one, which might be my favorite of the series four ones. Uh, it looks like some kind of rock star biker zombie thing he kind of reminds me of uh 
he reminds me of uh, Lord Raptor from from Darkstalkers. Really like it. He's got this big old chain around him. I don't, again, I don't know what his name is, but I will put it up. And uh, yeah, really cool. Like the coat. He's got uh, you know some some good detail in his face. He's got a noose around his neck. I didn't even realize that. He's got a, a big big old what appears to be like a Michael Jackson coat. So I don't know. Maybe it's supposed to be a reference to Thriller or something. So then we have this guy here. Uh, now I do know the name of this one. This is supposed to be the Boogeyman, which uh, the Boogeyman is kind of open to interpretation as to how it's supposed to look. Personally, I love the real Ghostbusters Boogeyman. That's that's my Boogeyman. But you can tell here, and uh, I don't know how well you can see it. He appears to have like uh, some kind. Of, oh, oh, I thought that was. Uh, Oh, that's a shoulder. <laughs> okay, originally what I thought was happening was he, he was holding like an ice cream behind his back or something to try and tempt, tempt a child. That looks like an ice cream. No, that's a shoulder. I just I just noticed that, and there's his hand. Um, yeah, this one in particular is quite sticky. Still quite sticky. I don't know what... Uh, they probably use like inferior rubber when they were making these. But um, there you see his face right there. Very creepy. Uh, this one... Very, very wide. Very wide to display. It kind of takes up a lot of room. So then we have this guy right here. Again, another really big one. One with a very, very strange face. Uh, this guy is supposed to be a poltergeist. You know, the ghosts that, the, like invisible ghosts that like throw things around the house. So uh, I assume that we're not supposed to be seeing him and only seeing the teacups and the hatchet and whatever the hell that is floating around. Uh, interesting concept. I don't know if it quite translates well, but um, again, figure looks really good. Uh, he's got, what is that? It's like, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. <laughs> Some kind of, it looks like he's scrubbing the floors. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's the poltergeist. Now here's the, the most baffling one to me. So take a look at this. What um, what do you think this is supposed to be? Uh, according to Monster in My Pocket, this is the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil is supposedly like a being that lives in the woods in New Jersey. Um, it's not as well known as like Bigfoot or anything like that. But um, yeah, uh, I've not seen that many depictions of the Jersey Devil. But when you when you say to me jersey devil i'm not gonna think half worm half horse with bat wings again points for creativity <laughs> but um yeah i don't really know what what made them think this is the jersey devil unless there is something some depiction of the jersey devil where it looks like this but i'm not entirely sure uh if if there is one i'll put up a picture if not, then too bad. So yeah, that's the Jersey Devil. I'm I have no idea. This one I really like too. Uh, it's apparently some angry little girl whose head is on backwards and has giant monster hands. Really like this one. I'm not even sure like which way it's supposed to be walking. It seems like something from like uh, from like a Japanese horror movie, doesn't it? You you can just see this sort of just going it was head spun around oh man my hands are really really feeling sticky so i'm probably going to keep this segment of the video pretty short so yeah that one's really cool i like it um then we move on to this one this one i really like too because it's like a i think it's supposed to be like a slime monster with uh what appears to be some kind of tongue and a, a skull over its body to represent a head it is really cool the reason why I like this one is because it, it kind of reminds me of the real Ghostbusters a little bit. This totally could have been like a real Ghostbusters toy, can it? Um, again, I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be, but again, there will be a, a thing up to say what it is, or at least what they claim it is. Uh, then we have this guy who is some kind of generic demon with a dragon tail. I'm not too fond of the paint job on there. It kind of abruptly stops. I like it when they just want to paint the face or the hair or, you know, the boots or something like that. Somewhere where it has like a natural stopping line. Um, but again, this one's all right. I like that one too. 
Uh, this one's really cool. <laughs> I uh, I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera, but through the viewfinder, the 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 color is very bright. Oh man, this I don't even know where to start with this. It's like a it's got like heads on its abdomen. It's got a head up there. It's some kind of like it's this reminds me of like John Carpenter's The Thing, doesn't it? Like after it absorbed a bunch of people. Again, I really I I do like the designs for some of these, uh, with the exception of maybe the Jersey Devil. This one I do know the name of. This is supposed to be a closet monster, as indicated by the closet door frame around its neck, which means this thing is huge. Uh, really cool. I like when they do scales on there or, or like lines like this. A lot of good detail on it. Really creepy looking. I just realized his eyes are like not even open. Oh man. That, or no, it's supposed to be like compound eyes. It's like an insect. Oh, it's so weird. And there's hair stuck to it, because of course there is. These things are very, very sticky, and I'm going to have to wash my hands when I'm done here. So let's look at the last two real quick. Um, this one's really cool. It looks like some kind of ghost, some kind of specter, or something like that. Uh, really simplistic design. Good paint job, good use of the paint on there. Uh, personally, I, I was totally fine with them just being, you know, monotone monsters. Because it, it gave them a little bit more charm, but uh, I, I do appreciate the, the extra effort they went into to try and improve these. And another one of my favorites, this spider with what appears to be a skull pattern on its abdomen and a really mean-looking human face. This looks like another um, Japanese thing. This looks like it could be a yokai or something. Uh, again, name will be up in on the bottom here. But yeah, I really like this one. Kind of reminds me of creepy crawlers a little bit. You know, a little oven, you put the goop in, and then you can make, you know, rubbery bugs and stuff out of it. Yeah, kind of reminds me of that. I wonder if they ever had like a crossover between creepy crawlers and Monster in My Pocket. I feel like that would have worked out really nice. But yeah, that is Series 4 of Monster in My Pocket. Um, I need to go wash my hands now. <laughs> because <laughs> these things are gross um yeah i would like to do maybe another video on these uh, perhaps next year for halloween if i get a hold of any others from any other sets like i said i really want to try and get the 2006 re-release ones um they, i have a feeling those are going to be a little bit expensive so hopefully uh hopefully i'll have the money by then <laughs> but anyway thank you very much for watching if you like this video be sure to check out my other videos. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you all have a very happy Halloween. And thanks for joining me this week while I looked at a bunch of Halloween stuff. So take care. Have fun trick-or-treating. Don't eat too much candy. And wash your hands after handling your monsters in my pocket. Monster in my pocket. Monster in my pockets. The monsters from Monster in my pocket. There we go. Bye.